And my next guest is Ron Beglin of R&D Tax Incentives to talk about how companies involved in research and development can get some extra liquidity during these difficult times. Ron? Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. You're teaching an old dog new tricks. So this is my first podcast we're meeting. So thank you. No problem. Thank you for joining us today. So let our listeners and viewers know a little bit about R&D tax incentives and what you do. Well, I've been in tax credit consulting for years. And so uh, we're I used to own a payroll company as well, and I sold that portion off. And what really excites me is more the tax credit consulting side of that. So uh, what I have gotten into uh, is research and development, which is a permanent tax code that the IRS and fortunately the state of California offers as a federal and state tax credit that can actually be an influx of cash back to employers. Uh, This actual tax credit was actually established back in 1981 and has been really opened up for, at that point, for big pharma, blue sky, lab coat, beaker type companies. And through challenges to the IRS and that, now it's morphed more towards manufacturers. And so, Uh, They have stats that 62% of all the companies that actually qualify are actually manufacturers. And in this valley, since I'm here in Fresno, I'm excited to offer that for a lot of manufacturers. Definitely. Um, Can you give us some examples of companies and their industries that you've served? Yeah, I have some really exciting uh, clients that we've worked with before. One of the biggest clients we had is a company that is up by Modesto. They actually are a fabrication uh, metal manufacturer for the nut industry. And so they work with a lot of uh, stainless steel equipment. And what's nice is they actually had six full-time engineers on staff that created nut processing equipment for a lot of the nut processors. It's customized equipment for these processors, and turns out that he didn't realize that they actually qualified for the credit. The nice part was is that we were we engaged together, and turned out that he had gotten over two million dollars back from the IRS and the state, and so it was the uh, the perfect storm for him because he's an S corp, so actually went back to his pocket, so it was nice that he it was a big influx of cash. The one thing that is kind of an antidote to this is that he actually, instead of taking that money and doing something with that personally, he actually started a scholarship for his employees' children. So he really felt the asset of his, his company was truly his employees, so he actually opened that cash up for uh, employees employer employees for their children so it was a neat story to have yeah a lot of companies are thanking their employees currently that are being heroes right now but this would be an opportunity to truly show that you appreciate the heroes that are on your front line for your production facilities Um, absolutely and then this isn't just for this year's taxes right how far back do the evaluations go well, actually, it's a, a retroactive tax credit, and they're, the standard answer, and this is without any other complexities in there, the standard answer is that you have up to three years from the, your filings with the IRS, so you can actually go back up to three years and four years for state. Now, if you've taken some other credits or some other anomalies that are within the law, then you can actually go back further, but my standard answer is three and four years. So when we do that, I had another case that we had a corrugated box manufacturer that uh, we were able to go back and uh, we got him a very sizable uh, refund back from the, the state and the franchise, or excuse me, the franchise tax board and from the IRS. And they were able to go back three and four years and we worked directly with their CPA to do those amended returns. Amazing. Um... And then you're going to be talking about this with other professionals too, correct? 
Yes. Actually, um, if you're leading kind of in, in we have a, a workshop that we were requested by, a, I don't know if you know CMTC, but they're um, a resource for manufacturers that they're a nonprofit that I work directly with them and been appointed as one of their companies to work with. And so they've asked us to do a speaking engagement here this Wednesday uh, from four to 5.30. So I've got some guest speakers that we're gonna discuss what the actual qualifications are, um, go over and uh, kind of talk more about really what the actual credit will do for employers. Uh, there's two sides to, and when I say two sides, two different tax laws. Uh, one is for startup businesses that can help reduce some of their payroll taxes that they're required by the IRS to pay that will help out startup companies to help reduce their cash flow or their cash payout. So it'll help them keep their cash. Um, on top of that, you can also do the income tax reduction as well. So uh, we're going to discuss that. And so I have uh, a couple guest speakers and along with a CPA to discuss all the taxation and then uh, discuss what the actual benefit would be for businesses. Awesome. Um, and that's going to be a webinar, correct? That's correct. We're going to have a Zoom webinar. Uh, it's sponsored by CMTC. The it's going to be uh, myself and Carol Burke will be the presenters. And then our guest speakers are going to be Mike Nemat. He's president of Nemat Incorporated. He owns a business, uh, Lean Solar. He has a, created a, a product that he have a patent on for the solar industry. And uh, so we also have Mark Jackson, which he is the president of Blue Dolphin Engineering here in Fresno, along with the pie shop. So Mark takes advantage of the tax credits as well. Uh, and then we'll have Adam Grzynski. He's a partner at Driscus Groom McCormick here in Fresno, and he's a CPA that will talk about the taxation and then what the benefits could be for businesses. Awesome. And the pie shop is one of the corporations in Blue Dolphin Engineering. They've been working to make um, face shields, correct? Correct. They've pivoted, which is fantastic. It's, you know, it's nice to see you here in the Valley that uh, businesses are reacting to the needs. And just, I think uh, the best thing about this Valley is that people really understand and, and empathize with each other. And so Mark has been a leader in this to create the PPE face shields for businesses and uh, I've seen some other companies that have actually pivoted as well. So it's a great story. Yeah. Um, I know EJ Gallo up in Madeira was making hand sanitizer. And I think you said Riley's Brewing also is making hand sanitizer right now? Yes, Riley's is. Yes. It's great to see a lot of our local companies banding together to make sure that everybody's safe and has access to required supplies. That's fantastic. I also saw just a side note that um, the Central California Blood Center, this is different than manufacturing, but the mm -hmm. Blood Center is actually taking plasma for people that have uh, recovered from COVID. And so they're the first one out of the nation that is doing this. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you'd saw that at all or not. I hadn't. Thank you for sharing. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up for today? Uh, I, if you wanted me to kind of dive a little more deeper on what the actual qualifications are, or if the actual credit and what that would be. Of course. Okay. Uh, kind of give you an idea of what we are and who we are is really, really uh, CPAs and tax attorneys that actually what we do is do the projects for companies. And so we're experienced professionals in this industry. And basically what we do is we use our proprietary software to actually produce these uh, studies for clients. And so what's nice is with our software, it makes it very intuitive, somewhat like uh, Intuit does to ask questions, to trigger clients, to give us the information so we can get the actual best case results for clients. And so 
when we do that, we actually uh, have a dedicated team that is for the R&D and then we actually produce the projects. And so what's required out of this is that number one, there's a, a four part test that's required by the IRS. And so what happens is, is that the four part test is not only from the IRS, but the state mirrors, the state of California mirrors exactly the IRS four part test. And so um, the four parts as number one, it has to be a new or improved business component, whether it be a product or process, uh, some process improvement, uh, technique, formula or invention. And so now they must meet all four, they just can't do three of the four, they must meet all four. So, and then the second and third kind of blend together, but I always go through these directly and explain to them that number two is there must be some elimination of uncertainty so whether at the activity that you're discovering information to eliminate technical uncertainty whether you're doing some type of capability or methodology something is uh, the appropriateness of the business component design so which then leads into the third part which is some process of experimentation so in other words, when you're developing something, uh, you don't really know what the end result is. You have a goal of how that's going to come out, but there's going to be some type of question. Is this really going to result into the end result that we want? So you're doing some different derivatives or some testing of hypothesis, uh, evaluating alternative designs. Uh, some systematical trial and error modeling is really what that process would be. And then lastly would be, it has to be technical in nature. So there has to be some science to it, whether it be engineering, uh, computer science, um, biological science or physical science. So uh, unfortunately, uh, social science doesn't count, but so those are the four parts that must, and it's mandated, they must eat, uh, meet in order to become eligible for research and development tax credits. So typically what we do is we consult on that. We try to determine and look at what their project is. We get to know the business on a personal level, understanding what their process is. We do actually plant tours. Um, we do virtual plant tours now. And so we wanna make sure that we're following guidelines with this and being safe. But um, then, what we'll do is we'll just have a nice discussion with them to find out some of their activities. And so what's required by the IRS is that there are specific activities that actually will qualify. So we go through really what they mean. And so um, some of the areas we talk about is the qualified activities of being some uh, design test uh, execution, some beta testing, prototype refinement, technical meetings, uh, technical writing, any research, any design build. Um, we go through the majority of it to try to find out who actually in their organization is part of this. So in that, what we do is we uncover a lot of other people that are actually involved with doing research and development. So, and what we're doing uh, all together is actually doing a reverse audit. So we want to make sure we're building an audit proof product for the client. So if they're ever tested by the IRS or the state, we actually will make sure that they pass audit from that standpoint. So, and then um, within that, we try to look in at their organization and then look at the positions of all the people involved. And we try to look at a one up, one down position will take the people within the direct research, whether they're, they're a scientist, engineer, a programmer, a subject matter expert, um, or uh, technical staff. Those will be your people that are really doing the research and development directly. And then we try to look at one up and one down being that they could have some indirect technical support, whether they be a a technical staff person or administrative, um, any researchers, data modelers, uh, anybody that's doing that, even salespeople. So
so and then we try to look at the one up side of it where it could be the uh, direct technical supervision whether it be owners or any supervisors any um, executive vice presidents anybody that's involved with that so and that actually comprises part of the actual study so um, we we'll do all the vetting to make sure that this passes compliance and so then we move on to looking at exactly all the qualified research expenses that actually apply to the actual law. From that standpoint, we look at all the people that uh, are involved with whatever percentage of the actual research and development projects they've been doing. But um, what's included is everybody's wages as a portion of what would be the, the expenses, as well as if they've ever used an outside contracting company to actually produce this product. Uh, now, they must be in the United States, and so uh, it's US-based, and so uh, we look at that. We also look at any supply cost. Um, what were the supply costs when they were actually, cons that was consumed during experimentation? Um, as I mentioned about the, client that used a lot of stainless steel equipment. The stainless steel is very expensive and that's really what pushed a lot of the, the research and development uh, project up to a high number. Um, and then if the last part of it would be they can do any rental or lease of computers if it's used with that, uh, they can also be included into the actual project. So um, we're almost out of time for today, but it Make, I want to make sure everybody knows about R&D tax incentives, how to get in contact with you, and how to register for the webinar that you'll be hosting. I would love to have uh, people join our webinar that would be on Wednesday. Uh, they can contact me directly. I, uh, my phone number is 559-612-4343. And my email address is ron.beglin, B-E-G-L-I-N, at rndtaxincentives.com. And I can give them more information and then get them registered for this. The nice part is that we're invited by CMTC and we have went through Eventbrite for the tickets. And I'd be happy to have anybody that is interested to join us on that. Thank you for taking time with me today, Ron. Um, I will make sure to post up some pictures of that on the show so that people can see all your contact information and a little more about you and how to reach your website. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Tara. Thanks Thank for you. your time. Thank you for joining me. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.